uh, I'm going to show you today a little bit how you uh, inlay a fine silver wire in a spur band and the same principles can go for a buckle or a piece of jewelry or whatever and uh, some of you probably watched my four part series on making spurs and that spur or that pair of spurs that was in that video was uh, inlaid in the bands with uh, fine uh, silver wire and uh, I just want to go over how I did that and uh, the principle can hold true on a buckle or a piece of jewelry uh, it doesn't have to be spurs anyway uh, it's a little hard to film this but so I'm going to use some drawings to show you exactly what I did and then I'm going to show some camera work too of actually doing it uh, so stay tuned with me and we'll get right into it okay to begin with uh, we're going to use uh, several types of gravers uh, one thing I'm going to use is a square graver and uh, we're going to use a number 37 uh, flat graver and we're going to use a special number 40 flat graver that I've uh, ground a certain way to to make uh, our wedges in the channels and we're going to use in some cases we would use a uh, uh, sharpened uh, high-speed steel uh, stippler but sharpened to a real fine needle point and then to put the uh, silver into the piece we're going to use a, a brass round rod I think this is a eighth inch yeah eighth inch and uh, it's just put into a a holder for my engraver the wire we'll be using is a 24 gauge fine silver wire you, you can't inlay sterling wire without a lot of difficulty I don't suggest it uh, you want to use pure silver it's a uh, .999 silver and it's soft and pliable and it will go into the channels real easy and it measures .020 inch 24 gauge we're going to cut a channel this top diagram here say this is our spur band we're going to cut a channel that is about .020 inches wide that's what our wire is so uh, that's what the width of the channel we want and we're going to just cut this channel with the number 37 graver it's a flat graver this one here and we're going to cut it this channel about 0.015 inch deep that way when we put our round 24 gauge wire down into the channel it'll stick up out of the channel just a little bit okay the next step that we will do is uh, I have a, a graver here and you can see here on the diagram at the top how I've shaped this flat graver it's a number 40 it's got a, a grinded arch in the bottom of it so you can reach down and under this over this channel and then it's kind of sharpened down like this uh, I don't know how much you can see it on the the camera there but anyway it goes and it'll reach down over into this channel and what we want to do is uh, hammer and uh, kind of a hammer a wedge into this to look like this here with a wide bottom and, and a .020 top and I just use this and I just kind of cut 
into that bottom edge on both sides and uh, make this wedge like this. It's called an undercut. And that will allow our 24 gauge wire to lock in there when we hammer it down in here. It'll expand out like this. You, you would put the wire down into the channel and then when you start hammering on it here because of the pliability of fine silver it'll flare out at the bottom and fill in these undercuts and that locks it in there. Now there's a, a circumstances sometimes where I raise burrs in the bottom of these channels. You don't always have to do it I've found you can lock it in pretty good this way but I like to do it because as you're putting the wire down into this channel uh, it locks and holds it real quick and then you can go ahead and keep pounding on it until it gets all the way down in there but it just grabs the wire real quick if you have the burrs in there the burrs are raised in the bottom of the channel that's been wedged you want to do the raise the burrs last after you put the wedge in there with this special graver. Uh, some people I've seen can cut this wedge in there with a square graver. I just like this. It, it's easy and I can sit there and the, the engraver can just kind of hammer it along and go pretty fast with it. Uh, unless you got a lot of curves like on those spurs. I did have a lot of curves. But anyway uh, I raise these burrs in the bottom of the channel with a square graver and I just dig them down and peel them up and I usually do them opposite each other like one this way one that way one this way one that way or you can do these two that way and these two that way and it just makes uh, like a, a bed of thorns in the bottom of the channel like this and uh, then when you hammer your uh, uh, wire down in there these gra uh, go pierce into the bottom of the wire and then as you hammer it those bend over and lock that uh, wire down in in there and then as you hammer it further it ply uh, it molds into the bottom of the wedge We're gonna. I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna go over here and start on a spur, and I'm gonna show you how this is done. You won't be able to see these burrs and the wedge in there because it's too hard to film. I've already done all that on these spurs, but uh, um, you'll see how I lay the wire down in there and I hammer it down in there. And after you get it all hammered in there, you just uh, go over it with the brass punch, this here, and uh, that that's how you hammer it down in there. You just keep hammering it until it's pretty much level with the top. It'll be a little bit above the top. And then we take a sanding disc and we go over that and uh, sand it off smooth and that completes it but anyway I'll the next two clips here I'll show you uh, how I'm doing that okay I uh, forgot to say one thing about the the stippler that I was talking about the stippler comes in handy when you have a channel that has a corner in it let me get this up here where you can see it like say you've cut a channel this way a channel this way and you've got a sharp corner well I use the stippler to get into this corner and hammer my wedge in that corner the square graver I mean the flat graver the 40 special grind 40 flat graver you can wedge it this way and wedge it that way but you can't get right in the center of that corner back there so I use the stippler to just punch kind of a hole back in there to where that silver can uh, go up in there when I hammer it down in there. Same way over here. You can also use this to raise those burrs in places that you can't maybe can't get your square graver down in there. 
you can slant this stippler at a slant and kind of raise a burr with it too. I've done that a lot. So that's what we use the stippler for. The, it's real fine, sharp pointed. Okay, we've prepared the channel like I uh, showed you in the previous clips with the drawings. And we're laying this uh, fine silver wire into that channel. And we're punching it in there with this uh, eighth inch brass rod a little at a time, just working it down into that channel. And uh, that rod is uh, uh, mashing it down into those wedges and those burrs that we put into the channel. And you just keep following this around and uh, work it slowly. Make sure you get it down right in the center of the channel and then hammer it down to where it locks in. It should lock in real fast with those burrs in there. And it's going to come out just a little above the surface of the band. And then when you get to the end, you can just keep punching on it and the wire will break right off uh, at the finishing point. This particular inlaid band has a an outer inlay and an inner inlay. I've transferred this design on here with some transfer methods I use and I'll, I'll do a later video on that also. And here I am just going over the the whole heart uh, trying to get it all smoothed down nice and uh, it'll overrun the channel as you hammer it in there but that'll all be sanded off uh, when you get to that point. You can see the other inlays look like a real mess, but they're just hammered down into those channels. And uh, I'll show you in a minute here uh, how that was done. Just keep working it there and uh, this uh, brass rod every once in a while has to you have to take it out of here and have to run it on your hone or your sharpener because it'll start curling over on the ends and you just shape up the end and make it smooth again and there you go okay here uh, I'm doing the inner part of the heart and I'm gonna I'm just kind of showing you here how I use that uh, 40 flat graver that I had ground into a special grind to uh, put these wedges or these undercuts I guess you would call them into that channel and I'm just going around the uh, outside edge of the channel and the inside edge of the channel until I get those into place And then here I'm starting the uh, wire in in that after I've done that. And again, like the outside of the heart, I just work it uh, around slowly. It's a little, little bit more difficult on a real small piece like this, but you just patience and you'll get it all in there the more burrs you put in that channel the faster it locks down in there now sometimes on wire inlay you don't have to even put burrs it can just hammer it down into there and it'll lock into the wedges but I just like to put burrs because it it grabs that wire real quick and then I go ahead and hammer it and finish it out. Uh, when you cut those undercuts, uh, it raises the edges of the steel up around the channel. And when you're hammering here, you're hammering the uh, fine silver down in there. And you're also flattening those raised edges back down. Here I've taken my uh, orbital tool and uh, I've got a disc on here 
uh, I'm not sure what grit this was. I think it was a 220. And I started uh, sanding on these. And I'm just hitting the silver and the raised edges and it's uh, any raised edges of the silver and just evening them out down to the flat with the top of the even with the top of the spur band and as you this is the fun part as you get this sanded you see exactly what kind of job you did on your inlay and uh, if you did a good job it comes out looking like a real fine line of silver I love doing inlays because you don't have to put no heat on the band or anything here's three of the four put in and then this is the finished product uh, the inlays are all in in these spurs hey uh, thanks for watching my video uh, about this uh, wire inlaying I hope it helps you and uh, it's just a, a really neat way to you don't have to put heat on your spurs and uh, or your buckle or whatever you could just go in there and uh, inlay that wire in there you could also do gold um, inlay wire uh, gold wire uh, a lot of this is the way they do guns where they put in, uh, gold and silver borders on them anyway it's a it's a neat technique and uh, I, I like using uh, inlay uh, if you're doing uh, sheet inlay where you're doing a whole piece of uh, silver um, you again you use fine silver and uh, you do this same principle except you have to do it over a broader area and there's a few other techniques to that and maybe I can show that sometime but thanks for joining me and uh, please uh, comment I like to hear from everybody and check out my other videos and I'll try to make more as I can appreciate it